Hey guys, Adam here, K6ARK. I want to show you one of my cool radios today. It's a rock mite that I crammed into an Altoids tin. Tiny little box. Got everything you need in there for a QSO except the antenna. Let's check it out. So here it is my friends, the Altoids 10 Rock Mite. This is a Rock Mite 2, it's a 40 meter version. Built this so oh, maybe five or six years ago and it's gone through a number of iterations and different cases through the years. And this is what I've settled on for what I think is kind of the ideal package for it. Let's take a look inside. So first thing you'll notice is that there's enough space in this tin to fit a set of headphones in here. Kind of a nice bonus and uh, makes for a nice compact kit. So on top of that, you can probably see the 500 milliamp hour LiPo battery here. This is a 3.7 volt battery and the radio doesn't want to run on 3.7 volts. So that feeds in to this on off switch on the front of the box here and then to this step up voltage regulator. I'll post a link to uh, at least all these components that I can still find online in the, uh, the info below. So. Don't hesitate to check those out if you want to build your own. So yeah, 12 volt step up voltage regulator here. And uh, that feeds the rock mite circuit, which is over here on the right side of the screen. This red board. The rock mite 2 and the rock, original rock mite are um, rock bound radios, which means they're, they're crystal controlled and uh, don't have, really have any frequency agility. So this one's stuck at 7.029 CW only, and uh, it has an alternate frequency. You can press this red button on the front and it switches the, uh, the frequency offset there to give you a uh, 7.028. So you got basically two frequencies to work with there. Has okay filtering, much better than something like a Pixie, um, but still uh, you know, nowhere near the, uh, the narrow filtering you get out of, out of modern transceivers. The other uh, elements to the circuit in here, down here on the uh, upper left side is a USB charger connected to the battery so I can very easily plug this into a micro USB and uh, charge the radio up. And then down here on the bottom left is the capacitive touch key circuit. So this actually has the key built into the box, let me show you that. The uh, touch points are on the outside here on the back. So these two brass cap nuts on the back of the radio here are the, uh, the touch points. The, uh, the key right here, or the touching this right here with just a very gentle touch uh, activates the capacitive circuit and uh, acts as your, your, the right hand side of your paddle typically to send uh, dashes. And the left key here uh, acts as the, the left hand side of the paddle and lets you send dits. Um, speed is adjustable. This has a built in keyer and you can adjust that speed by pressing and holding this red button here. Uh, it gives you kind of a, a series of Morse code uh, chirps to let you know what, uh, what setting you're adjusting at any given time. Pretty simple to use and pretty intuitive. The, uh, the other ports here, of course the BNC port for the antenna and uh, another external port for a key if you want to use an external key and the headphone, uh, standard headphone jack here on the end to plug in the headphones and uh, get your audio out. So that's the, that's the, the uh, radio right there. The uh, radio itself weighs a little under four ounces with all that stuff in it. So this is the antenna I use with the rig. It's a monoband NFED half wave with an ultra light uh, matching network built right onto the end of a BNC connector. If you're interested in antennas and want to check out more, subscribe, hit that bell and get notified because uh, there's probably going to be a video coming out about this sometime soon. Hope you guys enjoyed the rig. It's been a fun one. Use it to activate a number of uh, soda summits and have a lot of fun playing with it out portable. So, till next time, 7-3, this is K6ARK.